Hello and welcome to the Design Masterclass on Silver Clay with the wonderful Natalia Coleman. Now, if you have got your Silver Clay kit already and you're just waiting to see what can be done and how easy it is, stay where you are. If you haven't got your silver clay kit, we are going to give to you uh, one in this masterclass. Now, Natalia, in a nutshell, exactly what are we going to achieve today? Well, I was looking through all my treasures that I brought back from a, a little trip abroad, and, uh, and I was by the sea, and I went on a little shopping excursion, and I, um, is my mic not on? I'm just going to put it, I'm just trying to put it on for you while you talk. You do, well, just lean into me. <laughs> lean in. A, so always an excuse to get close to you, darling. You I'll just, you carry on, I'll give a fiddle. I, um, I was uh, on, a, on a trip and I was by the sea and I thought I'd buy lots of really um, interesting, thank you. <laughs> it's a great, a great start to the masterclass, isn't it? It can only go down here now. Um, I, I found loads of interesting shells and aquatic stuff and, um, and when I got home I thought I want to be able to treasure these memories forever and mm -hmm. I'm sure lots of you have done that, you know, where you collect shells on the beach or you know you have interesting little things that you, you go on country walks yeah. and you find things. Definitely. Um, so that's what today's all about, it's about capturing those in silicon moulding putty which is a fantastic Ooh. product Ooh. which I can't wait to show you how to use, very very simple and then casting from the mould we're going to use silver clay and make uh, fine silver, beautiful pieces of jewellery from them. A bit like this? A, a little bit like the ring that Jenny is modelling for you. Didn't that notice me for that one, did you? I know, you just sneaked it on I your hand. I'm getting better. And you know it fits perfectly, doesn't it? It's How funny. Is that? It's like Cinderella it slipper. It is funny, isn't it? Now, if you want to create something like this, I'm going to give you the um, opportunity, the materials even, to do so. And then we're just going to give Natalia free reign to just tell you exactly because it's all about Natalia. Now, <laughs> your silver clay starter kit has got, I would, no, really serious. You've got your playing cards. Those are for helping you achieve an even surface when rolling out your clay and for other things too. You've got your roller. I am so sorry if you feel like I'm going quite fast here. I'm, going, I'm doing that purposely so that you get more time uh, with the actual masterclass. You get your balm, really important that balm to put onto your roller, onto your fingers when you're working with silver clay. You get seven grams of silver clay which then develops into 99.9% .9 fine silver. That's right. You get your gauze for firing up. You get your acrylic sheet. Now this has got the backing on it but you, you just take that backing off your acrylic sheet. Your wet and dry sanders, your files, your water brush pen, which is if you are getting your, if your silver clay starts to become a little bit dry, you fill this up with water, give it a dab, and you can get right in the little nooks and crannies, the bits that might start to dry out and crack, that's what that's for. Then for finishing off your pieces, you give them a brush, get all the residue off, ready, and again for finishing off you've got your acrylic tool there, and you've got your tweezers, and you've also got your cutter. How many cutters do I get? Just one. Let me see. Yeah. So all of this you are getting for just $44.95. Now this is the lowest price tag, isn't it, of our um, silver clay kit that we've seen it. We've seen it much higher than that, haven't we, Scott? I think it... We've seen it lower than that at uh, special occasions. This is a great price tag. You also get your uh, display cabinet as well. Just trying to hit, yeah, we did launch this way, way higher. In fact, it's $44.95 today. I think it launched somewhere over £60. So this is a great value. £44.95. One of your wire brushes, one mini roller, pack of playing cards, you've got your tweezers in there, your abrasive files, your clay cutters, your gift box with the transparent window for afterwards when you're displaying your jewellery, your snake roller, your agate burnisher, your wire mesh, your sandpaper square, water brush pen, clay balm and seven grams of silver art clay. Now we're also going to give you the two pots Natalia is going to show you and this is for moulding. Yeah. Tell, tell me exactly what it's for. Okay, what it is, is it's a special silicon moulding compound mm -hmm. um, and so what you get is basically two parts 
and um, so you can't make a mold until you actually mix the two together so as long as you keep them separately then nothing will happen there's a chemical reaction that happens once these uh -huh. two meet and um, there's a little bit of magic goes on are we going to see but, this magic uh, yeah today? of course we are we're going to make plenty of molds and we're going to make some jewelry um, but i found uh, let me tell you about the reason why not all molding compounds are the same because i know you're canny audience you like to shop around and make sure that you're getting a, a really good deal and you will find a lot of molding products the reason that I recommend this one is simply because it's silicon based which means that when you put your silver pieces into it you, you put your silver clay in you don't need to put any kind of resist in there you don't need to put balm or olive oil or anything like that um, and the silicon will stop the clay from sticking to it you can also use these molds for resin for polymer clay for dual enamel so they go across a wide spectrum of different mediums that we have at Jewelry Maker, which is why it's a brilliant product. And also, if you like to make um, fingerprint keepsakes, mm -hmm. um, a really vital part of making that is you have to make a mold from a mold, which we'll do another masterclass on this in future, I think, because I think this is going to be popular. But this particular one doesn't stick to itself when you're making a mold from the, the original mold. Okay, so it's safe to do fingerprint things with yes, as well? Yes, it is. Yes. Okie dokie, so safe to use without wearing gloves? Well, they come with gloves and I've used this in lots and lots of workshops. So hundreds of people have been through my workshops using the moulding putty. I've never had anybody have an allergic reaction to it. If you know that you've got sensitive skin or you suspect that that might be an issue of eczema or any kind of things like that, then use the gloves that are supplied in the pack. Of course, we cannot um, offer medical advice to anybody, so if, uh, we will always say to you, do a patch test on your skin just behind your wrist or just here on the neck just to, uh, just to check that you don't react. But in normal cases, Natalia is saying that um, reactions haven't occurred at all. Now, we've already had 30 of these allocated. If you're watching our live masterclass here this Thursday, what is it, the 10th of September? The 11th. The 11th uh, of September. The 11th? Goodness oh, the gracious. the 12th, even. Of course it is. <laughs> Where's the time? Oh, no. Time's marching on, isn't it? <gasps> Anyway, and it is, and indeed, and it is ticking on for us here on the Masterclass because the most, uh, most importantly, I need you to get this ready to start creating. Get the little scoops as well. Two of these. Now, Natalia, talk to me. Can I reuse this? Does a little go a long way? Um, a little goes a long way, absolutely. What you want to do is to try and gauge the amount that you need for the type of object that you're taking a mould from. So don't take, a, well, we all make this mistake in the early days, taking a huge amount of it and making a mould that's far bigger than the object that mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're moulding from. So um, if, you, if you need to have a guide, then get some Play-Doh and just cover your object with Play-Doh and just see mm -hmm. you know, how much roughly you'll need. And because you're mixing the two parts together, Obviously, you're not taking the whole amount from one jar, you're taking half and half, so be aware of Other that. Other modelling materials are available, such as FIMO or Plasticine, or just use your modelling tools you can get out there, like your cloud clay and things like that. Now, Natalia, I notice on the scoop that mm. there is one with a blue dot and one that um, doesn't have the blue dot on yeah, it. Yeah, it's for is people like me, it's you know, idiot proof. So you don't forget which, which scoop you've used for, for which pot because obviously if you start dipping the blue into the, the white, then mix you're gonna mix up. them up, yeah. Okay, right, so we're gonna give you your price tag for these. They're back in um, stock. Are these brand new or are they back in stock? There's 200 grams, well, we've had them before. I've not yes, seen them before, we have. so this is good. And we're going to give you the fabulous price tag of £34.95. How many moulds can we expect to make on an average size? I really can't say because it depends on different. Yeah, mm. the size of the object you're taking a mould from. But what I can say is that I use them extensively in my workshops mm -hmm. and they do go a long way as long as you measure them out properly, you know, that you, you take a fairly accurate guesstimate of how much you'll okay. need. Fabulous. Right. Let's get cracking, shall we? I'm going to give you the silver art clay and uh, the silver and the um, one of the Natalia uh, stamp collections, the prints. Should we give them this now? Or should we? Get, yeah, let's do this now. Let's give it to you now. Not Why not? Well. We're very busy. We're on the subject of it all. Seven grams. Now talk to me, Natalia. Once that burnishes, how much do I expect to be left with after that seven grams in fine silver? Well, when you fire the silver, um, during the process of the water evaporating from the clay and then the, the, uh, the um, binders burning away during firing, it, the clay shrinks by about 8%. 
So if oh, anybody so can much. do the maths, it's eight percent from seven grams. Now, so you've got at least six grams. It's important to note that it's not actually clay that you're left with. It's silver, mm -hmm. fine silver, the purest silver, 99.9 percent .9 solid sterling silver. Fine <laughs> silver, not solid sterling silver. 99.9 percent .9 fine silver that you are left with. It's easy to say that though, isn't it? Because that's what we've known for years and years. What's and the difference? What's the difference? Well, the difference is um, in about 1992, the Japanese invented this product by grinding down uh, silver into tiny particles, adding water to it, and a special binding ingredient that creates this clay-like consistency. So it looks like porcelain, ceramic clay. Um, the difference is that you've got 99.9% .9 silver content, whereas in sterling silver you have 92.5% because it's got things Which like Which is copper. why it says 925 silver, yeah? Yes. So if you had your pieces hallmark that you made from silver clay, then they would stamp 999 as opposed to 925. Okay. Fabulous. Fabulous. So you've also got here some sterling silver wire. Brand new, only ever been on a, when, when this just came in, didn't it? Previous masterclass, it hasn't actually been on a show yet. There's in a masterclass, 0.5 uh, fine silver round wire. No, uh, um, is it 0 0.8? It says 0 0.8 and 0 0.5 on my details. Oh, sorry, Half it's 50 centimeters in length and it's a 0.8 mil in gauge. You've also got the walk on the wild side um, stamps. Now these stamps, I'm gonna just open for you. These are designed by Natalia and the important thing to note about these stamps is the quality of the material that's been used. Now Natalia, you did use, and not just because you're a girl, you <laughs> did use the most expensive type of material to create yeah. these. Talk to me very briefly about why. Um, it's a, a thick rubber, um, it's red rubber. Normally you see rubber stamps and they're grey. Yeah. And, um, and this is a, a higher quality rubber, uh, hence it costs more to produce. But what you get is a, gr is a greater definition um, with the design, which is really critical for silver clay and polymer clay. So the, these are thin enough as well to pass through um, a polymer clay roller. Oh yes, that's important, isn't it? Yeah, and they can be used for the dual enamels as well. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to give you this whole bundle with a £15 saving today. So come shopping with us during the Masterclass EDG C84. If you're watching or repeat, I can only hope we've got stock for you. But while we're live here on Thursday the 12th yeah. of September. We don't know what, we've been up so early, haven't we? We don't know what day it is. <laughs> £34.95. pence. You can get involved in one of two ways. 0800 Don't forget you get the silver clay in here as well. This is a, and, and, the, and the fine silver wire. Yeah, it's a really Not great Not 925 silver that. wire. This really is fine silver wire. 34.95 is an absolute treat. It's an absolute bargain for you. So grab it while you can. We're busy during this live show. Producers, presenters, we would all kill to have this wire on our show. Fine silver wire, it would go. Yeah. We're not allowed it individually. It has to be in this bundle because we haven't got enough to take it to a whole four hour show. So if you're watching now, grab this. Even if you haven't got the silver clay stuff because if you're, if you're, if you're thinking about silver clay, Grab this bundle because this fine silver is really worth having. Bundles are great because you, do you know what? Because you get, you can get that bulk by saving, can't you? Now, do you know what? Without further ado, let's get cracking. Shall we have a look? Please. Shall we see, see what to do? So I've got these great shells here that, um, that I picked up on my travels. And um, what I wanted to do is to show, you know, we, we've got, these are the, the kind of, shells that you, you often see, you know, mm -hmm. in the British seaside mm. resorts, um, which are really cute and fun. You can pick those up yourself. I think Europe in general, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So they're, they're not terribly difficult to get hold of. But what you often find in these uh, little shops at the seaside is that they have the more exotic yeah. specimens from the bottom of the sea that have been brought up. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you have curly shells like this, and um, they create a really lovely... A lovely design. Can you imagine that? You know, Brilliant the, texture. The moulding compound really picks up the fine details, as we will show in a second. Um, this piece is um, it's like a, a sea coral. I love kind of that. 
uh, really interesting little features on that. So I thought that's going to look amazing. So you know, it, it did really create some beautiful um, earrings that one. And then I just love my sea urchins. Aren't they beautiful? They're gorgeous. Where did you get those from? Um, well, I got them in San Diego, but you can buy them in the UK. So San Diego. Yeah. You don't have to go to San Diego oh, to get the urchins. I'd like now. to though, please. But these did you get them on the beach, or did you buy them? I bought them. I didn't. I didn't have time to go beach coming. But um, you can usually buy much bigger ones that you see, you know, in people's bathrooms and uh, as ornaments. But um, this is uh, a, a smaller one, so you, you know, a smaller one is good too. I love Do this one. Do you like one. that one? Yeah. Do you know what are those called? I can't remember. You can actually go around digging them up, can't you? I don't know. Yeah. I'm it's not a whelk, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's not. <laughs> if you and I start trying to identify I don't every, know. every specimen Look at this that one. I've got in front of me, they're great. And often you can even pick up, you know, if, you, even if you're too busy or you haven't <gasps> been out to the seaside, you can go into these homeware shops and they sell bags of yeah, shells, they do. don't they? they? Do. Little star is this fishes. real or has it been printed on? real. Look what, that pattern? I think so, yeah. Crikey. It's like a little giraffe skin, isn't it? I love it. Like Look, this is like a little seahorse. And this one is a what, um, what originated from your ring. So Do you know what? This is fascinating when you look at it. These are... Mm, Mother Nature. It's wonderful, isn't it? We've got to get... Let's get on with it. Let's we haven't get got on. Long. So let's have a look then. Um, do we want to see finished pieces of jewellery first? Or Let, shall I do this? Let's, uh, you get prepared and I'll show okay. everybody what you can create while you're doing that. So here is that sea urchin necklace making the mould out of the sea. Isn't it wonderful? Look at the earrings. Oh, so look, so you have smaller scale, or did you just have a smaller one? I just, depending on the amount of clay you put in, you're going to get a bigger or a smaller design, which is fun. Look at this. They're so pretty. And to know that these are 99.9% .9 fine silver. And look at this. I love this one. How many of us have got that piece of shell. Maybe you had a special holiday this year. Maybe, I mean, it, yes, it's so reflective, Oliver. Look at that. I call him Oliver all the time. So it's feel like I'm just telling you off. Sorry. It's like he's Holly, and I call him Oliver. Because <laughs> I'm a mother, you see. Um, now, you know what? If you want to create something fabulous just like this, we're going to show you exactly how what to do. Okay, so there's different ways of taking moulds. So what I want to do is, I, I, we've never really spent time in the live show showing you this. So this is why I wanted to take this opportunity to do that. So let me get my gloves out of the way because I don't let need those. Let me just those. pop those out of the way. Um, and so first of all, I'm that going smells to... smells good. Does it smell? Because you're, you're into your it smells, smells good. You? I'm going to take a mould of this shell first of all. Okay. And um, you, you may not be able to detect that it's got these ridges on. But actually, the moulding putty will really pick those up beautifully. And um, because of the nature of this shell, it sits perfectly flat on my surface. Okay. So I'm going to smooth those out of the way, if I may, and um, concentrate on this one. So what we want to do is try and gauge how much moulding putty we need. Now, I have taken out a couple of um, pieces of, uh, of moulding putty, and I've taken equal quantities of the blue and the white. So it's part A and part B. I mm mean, -hmm. um, it says, actually says on the tubs, which is part A and part B. But it doesn't really matter, oh, yeah, just easy. talking white and yeah. blue. Now, if you wanted to be very precise, you could use the scales, you know, if you've got the scales and the, um, the resin kit. Are you I precise? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. Um, I'm a Gemini, I, I haven't got time for that. Right. And uh, so what I tend to do is just by eye, and that works for me every time. The only time that this won't set is if you don't, if you have a drastically different amount. So if you took two times as much blue as mm -hmm. you did white, it wouldn't have enough blue to be able to set properly. Right, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, to mix the, the putty, but um, because this, this shell sits perfectly flat on the surface, I'm going to smother it with the, uh, the putty. So I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to show you how to do another way of moulding. So there's a couple of different ways, and you choose which one you prefer. So taking the moulding putty, th at this point, there's no going back. So you said, can you reuse it? At this point, no. Why doesn't the moulding putty come readily mixed? Um, it's a good question, I don't know. 
<laughs> you I are the to, mistress of asking questions. I have to I ask it, don't I? I wonder why. It, there must be a reason it mustn't keep or something. Maybe, I don't know. That's oh, it, is that it because it hardens question. into a mould? It hardens into a mould. Well, that's yeah. why then, isn't it? But you can get a, a clay, another type of clay called resin clay, which does, it comes, it just air dries and, and it's already completely mixed, I think. So, what I'm doing, because I'm looking for an even colour. Can you say I want to get rid of all the marbling of the white? So, we're looking mm -hmm. for this lovely royal blue colour. So, I'm putting it into a ball and then press it into a general patty shape to cover my shell and then just pushing it on top of the shell and down onto this surface. Now because it's silicon it won't stick to the surface and I'm pressing gently around it because I want it to pick up all of that detail on the mm -hmm. shell. Now if I didn't do that it wouldn't pick those ridges of the shell, it would just literally be, there would be gaps. A dome, yeah. So it creates this nice flat base for your for your mould and in terms of reusing the mould, once the mould has cured, the, the mould takes between five to ten minutes to cure to set fully. Okay. Um, but do I need to keep it, sorry just, just asking, do I need to keep it under certain temperatures in order for it to set? Is there anything I need to do no. in particular? Just, just leave it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now if it was incredibly hot in the room or incredibly cold it may Effect. Hinder it. Yes. Okay. It's setting, which so is just the same room with ordinary. Yeah, room temperature okay. is fine. Now, when I press, when I finish this mold and it's cured and it's ready to to for me to push my silver clay into it, if I do this is one that I made a few years ago. It's going to rock while I'm trying to mm -hmm. do it. So we want the bottom to be flat. So I'm just taking the snake roller, the piece mm -hmm. of perspex that you get in your starter kit. I'm just going to create a flat spot. Is this something you learn over time? Yeah, when I was thinking, I'm really sick of these moulds moving. moving around. And um, just hold that in place. Uh, or you can just leave it if you want to. But that will create a nice flat bottom for you to be able to work with your mould better. Okay. And now these moulds, so we'll leave that to, I'll just leave that on top of there. Um, these moulds, this is one that is actually set, it's cured. So you can see it goes a slightly lighter shade of blue when it's actually set yeah, yeah. fully. Mm -hmm. And um, what happens is you can reuse this as in its in its present form again and again. You don't need to put any kind of clay balm or olive oil or any sprays or anything like that to stop things sticking to it because it's silicon. So it won't stick. It won't stick. How long have you, on average, do you set each one before it's ready to use? Well, as soon as you, a way of determining that the mould is actually ready to use, it's, it's quite easy. So I'm just going to pop that off there. When I press my nail into the side of there, you'll see we get a little impression yeah. of my nail. And if I do it with this one that's set. It's like rubber, isn't it? It is. It's set fast. So it's a really ready to go, ready to work with it. And it is literally the point at which you, you're digging your nail in or, a, or a, an object and it doesn't make and an impression, okay. you are ready to use the mould. Roughly how long did yours take to set? About five minutes. Oh. Yeah. So. No time. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a couple of hours. No, uh, and no. Okay, and yes. some of them do. They take about half an hour and, you know. What, the bigger they are, maybe the... Just a different products, different okay. ingredients. Oh, so this in one in particular you found to be the most... Fast setting, yes. Now, some people like to have a longer working time. They do? Because they, you know, want to mix the... Uh, the putty up and they want to chat while we're doing now. it. I do and I've seen people in the workshops will be sitting chatting and I'm going go you've got to mix you've got to spread that over your uh, over your object. Oh I see they want us la 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 yes. mouldy mouldy. Make it a little bit tense. I ain't got but time for that. <laughs> you'll, you'll be fine because you know once you get this what, what I would recommend you do is practice on a small piece first before you venture out into using okay. more, more molding compound. Okay, so we're going to we're going to set um, a different object. So we're going to set an object that we actually have to press into the clay. Okay. So I'm going to into the molding rather than sugar. the clay over. Yeah. Um, I keep now, saying clay and it's it's molding. Pattern. I don't know if you're going to come to this or not, but um, when we take it out, a bit yeah. of tweezers or will it pop out? Oh, it'll pop out because it's silicon yeah. and it yeah. won't stick. Yeah. Okay. So. I like to, the, the other thing is I like to recommend products that are easy for you to use and so there is nothing difficult about this, it's literally take equal amounts of, of the mm -hmm. blue and the white, mix them together until you get an even colour and then create your mould. 
Um, and it's not porous. This is the great thing. So you can pour any kind of. Can I pour anything into there? Polymer clay, yes, resin, anything. You can. Like that? Yeah. So you know your resin. Um, it won't leak from the mold. Now, if you made a mold and say I kept pushing down on top of that shell and then I made a hole in the mold at the mm -hmm. top, then you're going to have problems. So what you could do is you could mix some more and cover it or okay. put sellotape yeah. wherever it happens. So it's not the end of the world. I have molds where I've done that. You know, we've got yeah, you just think, I don't want to have to do that all over again. That's right. So here's a, here's a mold where we're going to actually push the object into it. Okay. So again, I, I've taken a roughly equal amounts, and you'll see just by eye, by sight. And you can see um, what's happening. I've got the silicon on my hand, so you can tell that it's, um, it's got that silicon in there. So I'm mixing this up as quickly as I can. You do have about a minute working time with it when you're mixing. I've got to let you all know that we have only got 50 of these left in stock. They are about to sell out. Loads of you there. Uh, what about cake decorating? Would it be um, if I like to make? Obviously, don't use it for the same things. Is is it safe? I believe, and I would. You'd need to check this out with the, um, the manufacturer. Yeah, that um, the, of the the ingredients list as to whether it was safe for food. So I haven't. Because okay. uh, you don't need. It. Okay, but jewelry making perfect. Jewelry making perfect. Yeah. Very popular. Really oh, loving it's these molds. It's a brilliant product. So get it into the reasonable shape that you want. I okay. want it quite tall because this is a deep. I think you haven't used loads there. So I'm just I'm doing. Oh, you're doing the, the tip. Of yes. tip of it. So you're just pushing it in and pressing upwards. Now, when you're doing that, this is where you need to make sure that you don't go too far down so mm -hmm. that you create a hole oh, in the yeah. base of it. It's not a terribly big problem, but it, it will be if you're starting to pour liquids into it. So that's when it becomes a challenge if you have a hole. There's temptation to just pull that straight out now, but you don't want to do that, do you? Well, what would happen is that you drag. drag. Yeah. So should we see, can you see how much lighter that is? Stick your nail in. Really, is it done yet? It's done. Yay. Yay. So shall we pop that off the surface? It's like, kind of like boingy. Does that <laughs> make sense? <laughs> that's how you know. It's it. boingy. Yeah, and then you can see how easily this slips out Ooh. now. What we don't want to do is we don't want to rip the mould apart because this is going to be, um, you know, this is money um, and we want yeah. to use this again and again. So we're very gentle in taking the the shell out of there. Just Do you sometimes might use apart. tweezers or something like that? Don't need to. Don't just need use to. your fingers, just gently pulling it apart and then your shell will come out. And your shell's in good <laughs> condition. Look at that. And you're wow. beautiful. So this really could be anything, quality. any keepsake you've got, something Absolutely. really special to you. Yeah. Buttons. Great. Christmas um, gifts and A things. lot of people come along to my workshops and they bring items of jewellery with them that they'd maybe like to have a silver equivalent of. Oh. So, you know, as long as, as, long as you're making it for your own purposes, there's not a problem with it. If you try to sell it on, then you are actually taking somebody else's design. So you do need to be careful with that. The same with buttons. Button manufacturers actually own their design. Do they? So you need to make sure... Even on a generic button? On a generic button, I don't think that's a problem, but you know, a button, button that has a fancy design on it, yeah. has a special design. Yeah. So do, do ask permission if you yeah. wanted to actually sell a design on an ordinary button. I don't think there would be an issue okay. with but, um, but don't even just think, to be do you? cautious, because mm, I know always, a lot of people yeah. sell their things. Um, so then we have, let me show you um, the bigger pieces like this one. So you've got the option of, and I think a lot of people, it's, it's personal preference, how do you prefer to take your mould? Do you prefer pushing in and pushing the moulding sure. putty up around the object or do you prefer to have the object stable and then push around it? Push around it. Yeah, I think for something like this, because you've got this detail, all these little, um, this is this is the bit that had the little spikes on them, and then when you remove them, it's almost like the hair follicles, isn't it? Mm. That you, you've got on there. So that's the detail. Love those little really nodules. It's kind up. of um, a little bit alieny, isn't it as well? Oh, it's gorgeous, though, it isn't pearly, it? Pearly says Oliver, Ollie. Yeah. Ollie, Ollie says pearly. So um, I'll show you. I'll, I won't actually make another mold of this because I have made one earlier. <laughs> You're smelling it. <laughs> does it smell of the sea? Well, does I you want to put that. it in your ear and you can hear the sea. It doesn't smell of anything. <laughs> Slightly disappointing. Really disappointing. <laughs> does this? Does that smell? No. Jenny, for anybody who doesn't know Jenny, Jenny likes smelling things, so... <laughs> Were you like a little sniffer dog in a past life or something? <laughs> Not in a past life, in this one. 
<laughs> so, um, so you can see uh, what's happened wow. with that. I'll just to show you the detail. Oh my in that. gosh! And, Isn't um, it? It's like a jellyfish. It's gorgeous. I love it. It oh. is really amazing. And so, you may wonder when I put some silver clay in there, will it pick up the detail? Will it get stuck? That? Bring that um, necklace over, Jenny, and uh, the detail is, is absolutely unbelievable. It's wonderful. Just how well it's come up. Wow, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Beautiful. So, shall I show you how to recreate this necklace yes. as my first project? Yes, please. Okay. So I used about ten grams of silver clay for this. Did you push or did you did you go up or down on this? Down. Down. So you push down. Yeah. Okay. Oh no no no. Hey, what did I do? Yeah, I pushed down on it. Yeah. And then and you've then got that flat, flat end. Look, you can see the flat yeah. surface there that Natalia was talking about, making all the difference because now it sits up like that. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So I've got some silver clay that I uh, put in some cling film earlier. Hardly any. Is that going to be enough? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, ten grams of silver clay in there. Okay. Now what I do want is I want it to be a little bit sticky, going into the mould. So I've just got a little bit of water and I'm literally just putting a drop of water on there. Just with your mix, finger? Mixing it with my hands. And the new formula of art clay, when it comes straight out of the packet, you will find it stickier than the old version. Mm. So we've got a new formula. Okay. It Just because of formula. It's Christmas 2012. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful to work with. Um, it doesn't dry out as quick. And then if it does, you just add, literally like I did, just a little bit of water like that. And then knead and disperse the water through the clay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it into the, sh the general shape that I want for the mould. I'm going to show you a few different ways of adding the silver to the mould just you know, so you can see the challenge of the different shapes okay. and, uh, and objects. Got a bit of water on there, does that matter? Okay. Wipe that off. It's great. Do you know if you were at home with me it would be wonderful because you'd be spotting all the dangers that lurk in the way I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then I can spot the dangers of my own uh, I know, well it's always the way isn't yeah. it so I'm just making a general kind of patty shape and then I'm going to aim for the centre of the mould and then this is the important bit we really need to push down hard to get the clay to spread out and to connect with all of the holes because okay. we've got quite a a detailed pattern in here which is why we wanted to add a bit of water because when the clay is drying out it doesn't stick as yeah. well and it's harder to manipulate, isn't it? It is, yeah. So when it's sticky, this, that's when you get the benefits of that. So oftentimes we don't want the clay too wet, but this is on this occasion we do. And so you can see I'm putting quite a lot of pressure there. I'm using that yeah. finger because I seem to be able to work it harder. And depending on the kind of size of the piece that you want is depending on how much clay you will use. So I'm just pressing that around there like that. Okay. Now, as you'll see on the piece that I've finished, the one that's already dressed up with the pearls and the, uh, the amethyst, um, it's quite a dome shape. So whilst this is a dome shape, because it came from this original, it's not as steep a dome as the uh, necklace that okay. I created. It would be if I covered the whole piece. So in order to get the dome shape, this is what you were saying earlier, what are you doing with a doorknob? <laughs> she said to me, stop asking me questions. <laughs> a variety of doorknobs in my toolkit. I was driving her mad. Every, every occasion. Um, and this is one of them. Okay. <laughs> I can walk around B&Q and stand proudly next to the plumbers and all the builders looking for, for different accessories for my silver clay. So the, the builders and merchants, <laughs> and the DIY store will be your best friend when you're working with silver clay, trust me. I'm gonna, now, what, what I would do is advise on this particular uh, piece is to leave that in the mould for about 10 minutes. Okay. Just to get a bit of substance to dry out a little bit. It will still be flexible, it will still be moist. It will. Um, but it will have, have disconnected itself a little bit more from the silicone. Okay. What I'm about to attempt is um, not advisable, so I'm gonna try and take it off. What do you mean it's not advisable? Because I would normally leave this in, but we, we do oh, mask. Oh, okay, you would time. normally leave this in for how long? Five minutes, right? Yeah, five or ten minutes. But <gasps> Look at the texture transfer. It's so hot oh, in the studio, wow. it's actually it's actually dried out quite quickly. It's like, a, like a food dehydrator in, this, in the studio. Wow. Look, so transferring, if we just pop that out. 
Mm -hmm. uh, transferring from here to here. And this could be for polymer clay, this could be for silver clay. Isn't it wonderful? Can you imagine the polymer clay in there with the gleam? to highlight all those we'll little like notches that on that because you like your gleam mm, don't you so do. that would be great so now we said that the silicone mold doesn't the, the silicone doesn't stick and i just proved that there thank you for, for doing that on live tv mold no, gosh, and yeah. um but the the doorknob will um make the doorknob the will stick yes okay so we need to put a little bit of clay balm on there so you're putting your balm on the on the to the doorknob yeah okay and then what I'm going to do is just pop that on there and I'm going to dome it. So then you get more of the kind of effect that you want. And I would leave that to dry on there. But it and that'll make dry. it nice and domed on top. It will. And then once it's dried, again, give it 10 minutes on here. Give it maybe a blast with a hairdryer or something to give it a little bit more. Oh, you can uh, do that? It won't crack? No, no. OK. Um, and that then balm smells good. Once it comes off there, it will, will hold its shape and you can literally dome it even further, just wow. pressing gently. It won't do that at this point because it's not Isn't dry it enough. wonderful? But you can get, kind of it's get kind it of like to, a crater. It's like the say, moon. That's the same kind of piece that I did earlier in the studio. I did actually leave it a little bit too long because the studio is, you underestimate the heat of this studio. What, and so. it's gone... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I've managed to dome it a bit more, but it was a little bit too far gone by that stage. Isn't it funny that this is going to transfer into fine silver? Isn't yeah. it crazy? I know, it doesn't look like that much at the it's moment. So, it? it's, isn't it cool? So I'm going to pop that on the dome just to, to get some shape. So when I... <laughs> it is, it I've just got to let everybody know that um, if you have questions for Natalia rather than going on to Facebook, please text us through 60777 GM Studio. Uh, we will be able to then relay them live to Natalia. Okay, where are we at now? Okay, so what we need to do for this particular piece is we need to make a bale. So I um, have some more silver clay that we can use for the bale. And at this point, this is where we need to bring the playing cards. I've got, have you got those? I've yes, got you have. Cards Starter here. kit has everything. In fact, the balm, the playing cards, the acrylic sheet, the silver clay, everything that you need. Details are on the bottom of the screen for you. They're only £44.95. Now, I'm using a piece of Teflon. So we, mm -hmm. we sell packs of these in tens. You can, you can roll straight out onto um, a craft mat or another playing card if you want to. It's up to you, how, what you use as a surface. But just make sure you put plenty of balm. And then what I've done is, what, what number of playing cards do I normally recommend? Can you Three, remember? Three, isn't it? Five, you were close. It's not normally. seven, Oliver, it's five. <laughs> He's oh, going seven. Rubbish. Seven, and I went three. You're all I rubbish. thought it was three, but listening. why do I use three? Do you? Well, you can use three, but I normally rec recommend five playing cards. My cards are the same as yours. I've got waterproof ones. Oh, have you? Yeah. Right, well, they're, they're thicker they're then. Snazzy, yeah. thicker. So they're snazzy, they're thicker. Maybe that's why. Maybe different. I told you I had waterproof ones. Maybe, and then I forgot, so maybe. Who knows? Yeah, it's definitely not my fault that I got the answer <laughs> to that question. <laughs> it's okay. That's, that's Oliver fine. says he likes his thicker, so he that, most of your pieces are thick. Okay. <laughs> There's no such thing as a silly answer, just a silly question, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm taking off a piece of, of silver clay, and it's more than I'll need, so I've probably got about five grams there. And um, when I when I'm not using my silver clay, I just keep it in this um, this screw top jar, and I've lined it with a wet baby wipe in there. Mm -hmm. And then I always wrap my silver clay up tightly into cling, cling film. film. And that's because cling film has still got little air pockets in it, hasn't it? Yeah. And the wet baby wipe will uh, allow the um, silver clay some moisture. Yeah. That's Without it. sort of dampening it, it allow allow it to well, it'll stop it from drying out. Kind of sciencey bit, really. It's a little bit sciencey. It is. Amazing. We never knew cling film was porous until I started using. I never knew clay. until I met you. Yeah, no. See? Yeah, it's funny old world. How it changed it? your life. Mm. So, um, I'm just going to roll that into a kind of sausage shape because that's the kind of Free shape hand that we need. That. Yeah, just, and then we're going to use the the rolling the mini mini roller. Now the mini roller comes with your starter kit, the details of which are on the bottom of your screen. So what I've done is I've propped my playing cards up onto whatever surface that I'm rolling onto so that I don't raise the height of the, the surface and therefore making the clay thinner. And um, a little bit of clay, uh, of clay balm on my roller and then I'm just going to roll 
So I want a strip of clay to make my bail with. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to, I've got um, a flatter kind of um, mould that I've taken of, of the larger um, sea urchin. And I'm going to pop my oh, clay into there. So you've got the same texture. Yeah, so I'm going to try. You don't get the same effect because obviously not pressing in really hard. Yeah. But oh, so you're lightly pressing this time. Pressing in a lighter way, but it just gives it gives a little oh. pattern there, which will mean that we've got we're kind of transferring the design all the way through then. There you go. And then what I'm going to do is just get him out of the way. I'll just this? trim this down. So this is the bail. This is what we're going to use to uh, to put our, th our beading thread through. What are you using there? Natalia? So this is just a cutter. So you could use a plain card. You can use a tissue blade. If you've got the polymer clay kit, then you, you'd have that in there. And take my excess clay out of the way. Just put that over there. And then I have a drinking straw, so you don't need to, to put any any kind of balm or anything on this. The drinking straw is easy to slide okay, out. That's one of the skinnier it. drinking straws, not the thicker ones. Not the really it? thick one, because I'm just using beading thread to um, to, to thread my mm -hmm. beads on. And then this is um, the the silver Lovely. clay paste, which it's is like a milkshake, isn't it? It is. And um, but don't drink it. <laughs> So in fact, not really like a milkshake at all. It's like a slip version. It's a watered down version of the lump clay that I've just been using. Um, or you can make your own. You can just add some water to your lump clay and make, it, make a little paste from it. So then what I'm going to do is to wrap this around, put a bit of paste on there like that, and then stick that in place, which makes it a a little bale shape for me and then just looking at my piece so so that the bale is going to sit like that flush oh. with the top so normally I wouldn't apply a wet um, a wet clay bale to um, a dried piece I normally like to connect them together when they're dry but for this particular How one would you do that when they're dry um, well you just use some paste and okay. connect them that way before you fire them but you you'd use some paste but on here, what I want to do is I want to um, is I want to, to make a seamless kind of joint. So I'm going to just lift the flap up there and apply a bit of paste to the underside, and also just a little bit of water with my finger, because when you have the water and the paste, you're creating a connection there between the, the clays. I'm just going to get, I've got a little t um, modelling tool in here, just grab that. So Natalia's just grabbing a modelling, like a little, yeah, ooh, just just a little like spoon. It's got like a little foot on it, but, and then I'm going to take so, off that, that excess, because we Where don't Where can want I get a tool that. like that from? from? From hobby stores. What's it called? It's just it's called a modelling tool, where you could use you know, just it's good, isn't it? So that's moved a little bit in, pro in transit. So, but when that dries, it'll be much firmer. It will, and then you can, you can work with it. Then you can use some water to get all that wet, and then just smooth that out. So again, I would work and make it nice and smooth and. And yeah, that won't weaken it. No, no, it won't do that. So, um, so you, you're just going to allow that to dry once you've tidied it all up, and okay. then you've got your bale in place. Um, and it's really important that before you fire your piece that you use the sponge pad that comes in your starter kit just yes. to, uh, to refine the edges of the piece. So you get those in your starter kit and again the starter kit details are down the bottom of your screen. Uh, they're the wet and dry sanding blocks that we're talking about now. Yeah. That's right. So you can sanding. Use them. Did I say it like that? <laughs> it sounded amazing. Sanding blocks. So you would use them dry before firing. So on a dried out piece of clay, once the clay is completely dry, you will um, go around the edges and just refining any kind of rough bits, any kind of um, ragged mm -hmm. areas because they're going to scratch your skin. Oh yeah, okay, good and point. And they're also going to look a bit rough. So a lot of people say to me, oh, you know, I wish I'd spent more time at the wet clay stage refining. Okay. And so it's about preparing, really, isn't it's it? It's really important to, uh, to do that preparation, yes. So let's move that out of the way. So we have a, a couple of other 
projects that I wanted to show you. Now and burnishing is when you fire it up and then it gets really, really hot and then it turns into silver. If you want more information on that, perhaps you've never really seen this before and you're thinking, I want to be able to make this. Uh, do you know what? Natalia has her own uh, series of DVDs out that are silver clay specific. Are these the only UK produced silver clay They are, DVDs? yes, at the moment. Now, we have got the creations of silver clay. And in this yeah. DVD, you get to make your leaf earrings, your domed heart pendants, and your teardrop earrings. And you also have, do you get both DVDs? And you also have ring making, mold making, and fingerprint keepsakes, as well as stone setting. I'm going to show you some examples of that. Have a little look. So you can make rings like this. Aren't these amazing? The mold making, fingerprint keepsakes, and stone setting. I think just those, those are perfect christening gifts, aren't they? And then just to show you, with the leaf earrings, your domed heart pendant, and your teardrop earrings. All 99.9% fine silver. Two DVDs, one fabulous price tag of just £14.95 QEG. C52. That's for two. You're, are you getting a buy one, get one? Are they normally £14.95 each? Okay, sorry, sorry. So you're getting both DVDs for $21.95. They're normally $14.95 each. So you've, you're making a great saving there. A huge saving. That's, look, it is big, isn't it? That is a really good price for those because they retail at $14.95, yeah. which you just said. Yeah. Wonderful. That's the cheapest well, you can get them anywhere now. How, they're 108 minutes. One of the, this one, uh, one's 101 minutes and one's 108 minutes. Lots of different projects on there put together exclusively by Natalia. Now you are making, it is a skill, isn't it? It's like being a, well, it's being a jeweller. You're a jeweller, aren't you? Do you feel like a jeweller? Well, you're kind of sculpting and making jewellery. So you're working with, with sculpting material and then you're working with, with uh, precious metal. So you've got these two kind of skills being employed as well as the, the other jewellery making Amazing. skills. Amazing. So here we have our little, uh, a mould that I took um, earlier on of this, this sea coral here. She has this lovely texture. And um, to make the earrings, you really don't need much clay at all. So you're talking about three or four grams of clay in that little patty that I've got there. I've got patty. my hands all covered little in patty. Patty, yeah. You want links <laughs> or patties? That's but what then, they say, isn't it? <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I want to, to aim for the centre again because I want an even finish. And then because that's got such deep ridges, I want to really pick up on those. I'm just going to pop that next. Our graphics are in the way. There you go. And I'm pressing down quite hard. I don't use the knuckle of my finger to oh, do get this in there. as well. Now for this one, because it's not got this curved back like the other, and we're not doming it, we're just literally going to pop it out of the the mould when yeah. it's dry. I um, want to to put a nice back on there. So what you could oh. do is you can use a texture at this point to create um, a nice appearance on the back. Ooh. So I think what we'll do is we'll use the uh, the leopard print from the walk on the But then I want to reverse texture. it. I won't know which way to use it. Well, exactly. But for earrings, because they're turning all the time, it's really oh, good yes. to have to have. Uh, okay, I've got an example of this. I've just seen these earrings. Look. So this is the reverse side of Natalia's earring. So we want it to look as, as interesting on the back as it does on the front. Yeah, that's so just as, as important, there. isn't it? So I've put plenty of balm onto my texture because that will stick to the clay. And then what I'm going to do is in the area it will stick where to I've it, found, it. You don't yeah, put the balm on. Is to just texture. Oh my gosh, tiny bit of pressure and look how perfect that is. Fabulous. See, wonderful. And so when they're turning, when they're hanging in your ears, then you know you'll be able to. to There's always uh, have something a nice pretty texture. to look at. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, now I have actually got um, one that I have fired already, and it hasn't been brushed. So I'd like you to be my little brush helper. I'll be your brushy. So you can see. Um, 
This is one that came out of the, this is the one that we just put in the mold just now. And then this is um, one that I, um, I refined it, so I took all the ragged edges off. And, um, and then I fired it on the gas hob for five minutes. So I'm timing the firing of the piece. It's bone dry. Put it onto the wire mesh that comes in your starter kit. On top of the gas hob, turn the gas hob on full blast. So put mm -hmm. it onto the biggest um, ring that you have yeah. on the hob. On um, this. And then the different areas on there will glow orange. And we have actually got a video of this on the introduction to yes, Silver we do. Play video yes, on we the do. website. Yeah. So you get to see the different firings. Um, and so place the piece on one area of the, the, the wire mesh that is glowing orange and then from the moment that the binders burn away you'll see a little flame and some smoke and you'll be able to see that the piece is glowing a uh, salmon pink yeah. colour and you almost can see through it um, and at that point you time it for five Slightly minutes. Slightly order the rings. I know, so while I was putting my makeup on this morning I was firing this. So it's multi Do be careful of course, be careful yes. if you're doing it at home, be careful not to touch the gauze. It is Yes, hot, it, of course, when you're doing you the hot the, metal. Yeah, just so please to be cautious. It. And then here it is. So you can see the, the colour that it goes. So when the firing is finished, this kind of chemical reaction that you get, we actually have metal here now. It's not, um, it's not clay, but it has a white appearance. Yes. And so Jenny is about to make it look silver. This one, yeah? Yeah. Can I pick it up? Yeah, and so you, you're going to need to get right into those little grooves on it because it's very... Do you want to make me a little acrylic -y thing then? So you can see, if you do half and half, and you can Get into the groove. You can see the see, difference there. Yeah, you can see there I haven't done. Isn't that lovely? Isn't it's it? It's going to look really silvery and special now. Shall I go for it? Yeah, just go for the whole piece. Make it look really brilliant. I was doing this with my shoe one, it would have really hurt. These are quite soft, aren't they? Yeah. Soft yet abrasive. A bit yeah, like me. you're rubbing against your hands, so you don't want them to hurt you. And what about the back? Should I do that? Do the back, yeah. So you can see where it's kind of matte, kind of frosted. I'm going to now, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> Let me hold it right. It's these nails, you see. See, I would recommend putting it on the surface and scrubbing, but then we're going to ruin our lovely mess. I know, so that's I why I'm not, I'm, I'm not allowed. Believe I me, I've had stern such words. such a mess of this desk with all Oxbury, my messes. go things. mad. I know. She'd go mad. We'll have complaints. Oh, she's got a temper. <laughs> she hasn't. <laughs> she hasn't. Ollie's saying anyone. No, she hasn't. So Only when I'm around. good, Jenny. Do you like my, do you like, oh, what about the edges? Let's do them. Yeah, do the edges, so get right into that. Oh, I could do this all day. I do like polishing things. Do you know, I'm obsessed with polishing boots. It's nice though, isn't it? Yeah. This is a, this is a very therapeutic part of making the silver clay, because the process just goes on and on. Mia tries to uh, polish her own boots and I won't let her. Oh, really? Because you like get it doing right. it. I'm like, nope, you don't get it right. Can't see your face in them, they're not clean Do you clean smell enough. the shoe polish then? Yeah. I bet you do. Yeah, yeah. It does smell very nice. Yeah, I like it. So then we're going to use the agate burnishing mm -hmm. from the starter kit and it works so well. You, you will see the value of doing a piece like this and I hope that when you go to the seaside next time you will never look at the seaside in the same way again. You'll be no. looking around for lots of things that you can bring home and make Definitely. more Definitely. We always do that and it would, um, we went on holiday with the boys, um, or with all of us, but the boys particularly went off trying to find crabs and shells yeah. and seaweed and we made mermaids on the beach and stuff it's so lovely it is, oh, I wish it? I'd have taken we bought an oyster shell home because we had oysters mm. but I wish I'd have known yeah. we went and picked our own mussels and cooked them for dinner yeah you know that kind of thing it's those mm -hmm. memories you can look at on a photograph but actually to mm -hmm. see how touch them I know it's so to, much better and this will last mm. forever you know because it is a precious metal and it's one of the most noble precious metals there is so now we want to add a little bit of shine to this and this piece with so much texture it really lends itself to getting a scrub from the agate oh, burnisher. Oh good, let's so, see how that works. Um, what we do is, shall we clean up this Yeah, look, so maybe this agate burnisher see. would work on boots. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, literally the, the tip of the um, agate burnisher I'm going to rub. Oh! Um, and it's just polishing so just up. just sort of scratching over the surface. Yeah, and it, 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 uh, what it does is it flattens down the, the metal and creates yeah. a, a high shine on the high points and the low points stay frosted, which gives you this variation in texture which looks so attractive. And wow. 
forget, you know, doing any kind of polishing with pieces like this. It's amazing. It really is. And then, you know, you can do this little bit down the middle. Get into, you know, in those individual grooves around the edges. Because I love doing them around the edges, okay. even if I never do any other part of the piece. So you're like peeling, like peeling <laughs> carrots. Like peeling carrots, yeah. Except far more rewarding. Yeah, I'd say. And there we go. So you can keep on, keep on going and, um, you know, to your heart's content until wow. you're happy with how you have it. How wonderful. I did actually this. drill some little holes in there before. I can see that. What did you do that way, the cocktail sticks? Now, this is um, the actual body of the Rima. Oh. Oh yeah, we get those in our um, original, in our big uh, toolkit, don't we, yeah. those ones? And so what I've got is different size mini drills, and you can get those everywhere. And so you just unscrew oh, really good idea, the way. end of it, and then you have a little collet, and then your, uh, your little drill bits fit in there. And then, of course, at the top, you've got the lid where you can put, all your, drill bits. put your drill bits in there. Oh, so that's, great. That's what I did with those. And I always start off with a very small drill bit. Mm -hmm. So probably, probably about three or four millimetres and then go up to one mil. OK, so you start off with a smaller hole and then you make it bigger. Point three mil, okay. sorry. And then go up to one mil. Yeah. OK, we've got four minutes. What can we be, what can be what done can in four minutes? What can we talk about? Well, um, I want to see. So you've set here with the silver. Mm -hmm. I just want to see this. Have a look. I need to let you know that we are very limited now on the moulding clay, the moulding silicone. next to you, that's how it started. So you can see that it shrunk, so you can see the difference, can't you? Did you clean these in any way or did you just... I did, what yes. With? Um, I just gave them, the, you know, just... just Generic warm, soap soapy water. water. Yeah. Everything goes in the dishwasher in my house. Oh no, I'm not sure they'd survive in the dishwasher. You don't want to put them in the dishwasher, do you? <laughs> they fall through all the holes, did not they? Yeah, yeah, they would. So don't forget your moulding clay. Your starter kit is on the bottom of your... So your moulding compound is on the bottom of your screen right now. Uh, but just to let you know, we are extremely limited now in the moulding kit. Now your starter kit, here you go. Everything you need to get started with silver clay. And remember, whatever you're creating is 99.9% .9 solid sterling silver. This is an incredible medium to introduce. I think you are... I feel like I'm acting as a jeweller. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I honestly do. Well, like I said, you know, you're employing skills across a range of different disciplines, mm -hmm. and it's just bringing them all together that's so exciting and fun. Yeah. You know, Hannah Roxbury loves this. Mm -hmm. Ruth Linné was in there with your workshop. Mm -hmm. Us, uh, you know, I come in all the time. This is, I always say this to you, it's my favourite, mm -hmm. favourite medium because it's you're creating jewellery like a jeweller. I feel I feel like a jeweller when I create jewellery out of silver clay because it's professional, it's fine silver. You can get your own silver stamp, you can get your own hallmark. Now I'm gonna show you, sorry, I'm gonna show you the back of the DVD so you can see what you can expect to create. We've only got 60 of these at 21.95. They're 14.95 individually on the website, or you pay Look at those, I'd love to make a ring like that. I just think it's fabulous. And if you're creating christening pieces, if a special person you know is having a baby, maybe it's gonna be your niece or nephew, you're really excited and you want to capture that moment, then this is the best way of doing it. Because it is one of the most exciting things, getting married, having a baby, mm -hmm. you know, anniversaries, you know, family events like this, we want to remember, we want to cherish yeah. holidays, we want to cherish them. And our children aren't young forever, we know this, don't we? You know, in those special times, taking them on holiday, Maybe it's a holiday you had with your mum, the last holiday you had together. And, you know, now, because I haven't been, I was, went on holiday with mum about four years ago is the last holiday we had. It'd be mm. nice to have a memory of that other than just snapshots, mm -hmm. you know. £21.95 for the two DVD, um, DVDs. You've also got Natalia's moulds, the fine silver wire, the silver clay, all for one price tag of 34.95 that is incredible incredible value don't forget the wire is fine silver you can't get this um, outside of this bundle fine silver wire we've been fighting tooth and nail to get this as presenters on our shows we can't have it we're not allowed it's just for natalia's bundle princess natalia <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> now, uh, please, oh. Natalia, tell everybody um, how else we can get involved in polymer clay. Uh, Silver clay. Silver clay. Have you got workshops that run? I have workshops that run every month, and we have a, a, we're really extending the range of project-based workshops. So we have an introduction to silver clay, and then we have silver clay ring making. We now have gemstone setting in silver clay. We've also got two more workshops planned for the new year. So anybody who's already been on the workshops, come along and learn some more with me. Make something beautiful. Get booked in. Phone numbers right there. All that's left for us to say right now is a great big goodbye and thanks for watching.